We're going live. <laughs> All right. Oh, what a day. I mean, probably one of the most productive days I've had in a very long time. I did three blog posts, a YouTube video, my client work, and uh, I have a few more things to do later tonight. So, good time. And actually, if I was doing the 1 million word goal this year or right now, I've done 4,272 words today so far. Not bad. All right, we're going to give it a minute, but then we're going to jump right into um, how to create a month's worth of content using Mindomo and Asana. Um, it's a great plugin, or not plugin, it's a great app. Hey, Diana, how's it going? And uh, yeah, we're going to do a, a mind mapping session to see if we can turn a listicle into. I'm going to shoot for 39 articles because I might use it for the vocal experiment next month. Starting January 1st, I'll be doing three blog posts a, a week on vocal.media and tracking how well each of them brings in any money. So. And uh, so far, with the amount of reads that I get in vocal, compared to how much I earn on Crossing Colorado, it's fairly comparable. So, if you don't have the money to start your own blog, something like vocal might be worthwhile. But that's what the experiment's going to entail. So, starting the first, I'm going to find out just how much money you can make on something like vocal.media, as opposed to operating your own blog. Now, personally, I'd rather keep a blog simply because um, there's more you can do with a blog than you can with a blogging platform like Vocal. Like if I wanted to add e-commerce or sell an ebook from it, I could. Can't do that with Vocal. I'm well, you were just talking to yourself? Uh, yeah, <laughs> kind of was actually. I was uh, debating on when I should start the video and then I looked down at the clock and it said seven o'clock. I'm like, well, guess it's time to start. <laughs> So anyway, we're going to give it a second. Hey, Shyman, how's it going? Haven't seen you for a while, buddy. How are things going? Um, I'm going to give it a few more minutes and then we'll jump right into it. And probably won't take very long to do all this, so we'll do the, or the traditional AMA afterwards. But I might go ahead and turn this into a actual video on the channel so i'll have to go through and edit later but that way it's already there <clears throat> so that's what we'll uh we'll we'll be focusing on and then we'll do the brainstorming and then just hang out i've got my coffee do you i've got coffee i've got water huh so my friend tested positive for covid my son probably has it. My daughter probably has it. <laughs> so uh, things are looking pretty grim for me. <laughs> but hey, I'm immortal. There's a reason why I have an immortality complex. I don't think I've had even the flu my entire life. I don't get sick. I'm usually a carrier. But so... Uh, which is funny because out of everybody in the house, I'm the one who never goes anywhere. <laughs> I self quarantine. I've been self quarantining since 2014, yet I'm the one who winds up getting screwed. It's all good. She's a hurting unit, but she sounds like she's getting better. So if Sam's watching, how's it going? Um. Yeah. Aside from that, be safe out there. I'm sure Sam will live through it, but she sounds horrible. And I'm hoping Annika doesn't have, my daughter doesn't have it. I'm hoping hers is just a cold, but we'll find out. <sighs> Good times. Dodge a bullet for the entire year. Yeah, it happens. Okay, so we're going to jump right into it. I'm going to give it a minute, but... Hmm. 
Okay, we're going to start off with uh, mind mapping in Mindomo. Now, Mindomo is a mind map app, and I've done a couple of videos about it in the past. It's been one of my favorite go-to tools for, wow, for a very long time. And uh, they've added a lot to it. And this is long before they added all kinds of cool um, templates to it. So you can use mind mapping for just about anything. I wonder if that's Sam bitching that I mentioned she had COVID. For fuck's sake, one positive of not being able to smell. <laughs> nice. Meta. Alrighty. Why do I have a... Oh, I liked my own post. Oh, that's good. All right, anyway. All right. So with Mindomo, you're, it's a great tool to use for all kinds of mind mapping. You can plan, I plan use it to plan out websites. I've used it to uh, plan out ideas for videos, uh, games. Um, like right now, there's like a ton of different templates you can use. But we're just going to keep it basic and simple because we're going to turn a listicle into a month's worth of content. So let's jump right into it. Let me fix this here and share my window and that is my domo and from here oh, i'm not gonna be able to see the screen i hate it when that happens let me pop out the chat here real fast so that i can see what anybody says bam right over all right okay so anyway this here is mind mapping, it's mind domo. Um, we can do all kinds of different stuff with it. Like if we scroll down, they've got all kinds of templates now. So you can prepare for an interview, problem solving, thinking heads, designing a business, uh, meeting minutes. I mean, there's like all kinds of stuff. And this is just some of them. Eisenhower box, so creating a wedding plan, nice. I don't need any of that. We're just going to keep it basic. So I'm just going to use a blank mind map. Alrighty. So first off, we're going to start with a listicle. So a listicle is an article that you use as a list. Pretty easy. We're going to do 16 ways to find, oops, find, uh, find motivation. Oh, no, oh, find writing motivation there we go. so that's the article we're going to start with so right there we have one blog post already so we're going to add um subtopic we're going to call this number one it's going to be gamify with goals okay so that's the first one so this is 16 ways to modify or define writing motivation and they want to put 16 different methods now this one here is its article by itself but we're going to write down all the different things we can do i don't like this one i think we need to pull them out nope oh damn it good enough doesn't matter <laughs> Two. whoa there we go okay i'm gonna go Two is going to be set a writing schedule. Now this could be any of the skill you want to create on your own. Um, it could be virtually anything you want to write about. Just a list of items that you create on a blog post. Now listicles work really well. They're one of the most common forms of content on the internet, and they are quite effective at getting an audience, which is why BuzzFeed still uses them to this day. My writing, writing tools. Oh, I'm going to write down all of these. Join a writing group. So, like Facebook and Meetup, that's what we're going to, that's the topic of this one. Um, social media and meetups. Um, I'm actually in a couple of writing groups. So, it's awesome. Very inspirational people. Hey, number five, let's go over, ask comments. Usually this is like in blogs. 
people saying thank you for this or asking questions and comments. Um, it gives you an idea on how to answer some of those. So we're going to go with six. It's going to be give yourself writing prompts. I was a big fan of the writing prompts in WordPress when they did them back in 2016. I used to write every day because I wanted to be a part of it. They'd give you like a word of the day and then you would have to write. Um, it could be a story. It could be a professional blog post, whatever, just as long as it had that word and um, in it somewhere. So logical. But I love doing those. And they stopped doing them at the end of the year in 2016. So it was kind of a bummer. Inspirational playlists. Love music. Music always gets me motivated to do stuff. Okay, we're going to do eight. We're going to be find an ideal writing location. Yes. Finding a writing location is awesome, especially if you have a house full of people. Um, make sure you're comfortable. So comfort is a big thing in writing, in any profession actually. I found that I am far more productive if I'm in a nice expensive $300 comfy sort of chair rather than a $25 Walmart special. Oh, the pain I used to go through, it sucked. Make yourself accountable. That is a very difficult one, especially if you work from home because you don't have a boss over your shoulder um, to make sure that you're working. So you've got to find ways to make yourself accountable and help yourself stay motivated to write. Use social media for accountability. So one way to get accountability is to use social media, mostly because I, whoops, well, I didn't know I could just double click it. I don't like to look like an idiot on social. So if I make a promise on social, I'll try to keep a, try to keep it. Unfortunately, it doesn't always work that way because, well, shit happens. <laughs> and uh, I just have a hard time sometimes. But lately I've been doing really good, so. Find inspirational memes. I love inspirational memes, even though they're just simple graphics and whatnot. But, you know, sometimes you can get uh, quite inspired by the right graphic. As long as they're true. Statistics. Whoops, style. Statistics. Look at past statistics. Now, that's one thing that get, gets me motivated real well, is I look back and see where Writer Sanctuary started and where it's at now. So when I look back at some of those numbers and say, and look at just how far I've come, um, I'm quite impressed with myself, especially this last year. Um, I almost tripled the traffic this year. So it's pretty, uh, pretty inspiring for me. Hello, oops, inspirational writers on social media. I follow all kinds of actual authors who often give inspirational quotes and whatnots to help people get off their button right. I'm quite active with several of them actually on Twitter. Reward yourself for a job well done. So, whoops, well done. Um, rewarding myself is one thing I have a problem with, mostly because I usually am on the side that if I want it, I'm going to get it no matter what. <laughs> so rewarding myself is kind of hard. And then the last one is get in some daily exercise. Exercise is a great way to get motivated, especially since um, raising your heart rate improves your brain processing power. So everything from memory to cognitive abilities are affected by your fitness. And the more blood you get flowing, the better off you'll be. And I've done lots of articles on that, complete with scientific evidence. How come I can't make that? There we go. I'm anal. All right. Need everything to be on its own line. Come on, get it, get it, get it, get it. Where is it? Oh, itch. Maybe it won't go bigger than that. Oh, fine. Be that way. 
But anyway, so there's our 16 things that we're going to put in this one blog post. Now, each one of these can be its own article. So like with gamifying with goals, we can do a how to with that. We can do steps on how to gamify with goals. Um, we can give another listicle with different goals we can do. So what we'll do is we'll start with a, well, let's zoom in here. We'll start with, we write a how-to on it. How to gamify with goals. And then what you do is after you're done completing uh, writing this article, we go back to the gamify with goals part and link directly to this article and vice versa. So you get a backlink and a link in one shot. So we're also going to do a X ways to gamify your goals. Now the trick is, since this is a writing website, I would probably focus more on how to gamify your goals or how to gamify with goals as a freelance writer or as a blogger. Um, it pretty much fits any niche and you can probably uh, find out quite a few from it. So they got X ways to gamify your goals. Uh, setting writing a schedule we can do how to use asana to set up a writing schedule um x we'll say x ways to set up a writing schedule but do you see what i'm doing here is that i'm starting off with a primary idea and then branching off into the different things we can write about we can even go with the writing schedule. Let's go with the X um, productivity apps. Because we can set a writing schedule with a lot of productivity apps, which is why I use Asana. Uh, okay, so like we're right now, we're just skimming through, coming up with quick ideas, streamlining your writing with tools. Um, we can do X free blogging tools now a lot of these i've already wrote so it's pretty easy but um you can do a how to use a writing tool and actually that can be we can do a how to use with a number of different things so like if we did x free blogging tools we can then use a how to use any one of them so like how to use asana how to use uh, copyscape how to use what's another one i use um keywords everywhere um but anyway you, you get the point you can come up with all kinds of ideas from that okay join a social writing group okay so we can do x writing groups to join on facebook um how to use hashtags in twitter or social groups so i'm not worried about trying to be grammatically correct these are just ideas i'm throwing out there uh go over past comments um answering uh let's see so we'll, we'll just do answering questions from comments now that one i've done a lot both for the blog and the youtube channel uh, there's been a few times where someone would comment something on a video and then turned it into a full length video with it while I was answering it in the comments as well. Uh, give yourself writing prompts. Uh, how about uh, X ways to find great writing prompts? Uh, create an inspirational playlist. Um, how music improves productivity now i know this is a fact because i've come across several um scientific papers regarding music so a lot of this is based on personal experience and off of stuff i've done in the past so let's see create an inspirational playlist um mp3 players for your computer which I don't know if anybody ever uses. I still have an old copy of Winamp. <laughs> so I've been using I've been using this one one program since 2001. It's still installed on my computer every time I get a new one. Find an ideal writing location. Um how to set up a writing um space. 
Maybe we can do uh, X things to have in your writing writing studio. Oops. Ah. Okay, make sure you're comfortable. Um, how a chair makes the difference in productivity. Um, that's based on, a lot of that's based on personal experience, but I also did find scientific evidence to support that fact. So make sure you're comfortable. Let's say uh, X top, oops, chairs for riders. Doesn't really matter really, but top chairs for riders, I'd probably get some attention. Um, make yourself accountable. How about X ways to make yourself? Wow. Okay, so yeah, I know my capitalization is like way off, but no, this is just ideas. I'm passing out. Oh, good. X ways to yourself accountable. Um, perhaps we can do. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Uh, damn it. Yeah. Let's see. Well, how, what else can we go with that? Um, maybe. Pick yourself a cow. Okay, we're gonna leave that one blank at the moment because I'm not sure. We can probably come back to it later. That's cool. The whole thing about brainstorming is just throw out any idea and then go through and edit it later. Social media for accountability. Um X ways to promote stuff on social. Um Facebook. Uh, let's go. How Facebook page Keep accountable? Um, Twitter. Uh, let's see. Find inspirational memes. Next best places for inspirational memes. Um, quotes, uh, look at past statistics, um, top, uh, metrics in analytics, um, uh, setting, no, how to set goals to, um, um, how to, God, I had something there and I just forgot. <laughs> My brain went numb. How to set goals to, uh, surpass your abilities. All right, uh, inspirational writers on social media. Accounts, whoops, to follow on Twitter. Um, if people, writers should follow on Instagram. I re reward yourself. Okay, so uh, let's go with to reward yourself for accomplishments. Um, let's see. Um, just to rewards yourself from home because there's going to be a difference hey yeah uh, daily exercises here we go uh x exercises you can do in the office i think i've done that actually on crossing colorado um getting some daily exercises um not really sure if there's <laughs> if there's a difference between Exercises for writers and not maybe I don't know I can add in some like um, hand or forearm 
anything gets the blood going, but that'd be kind of a fun one to write. Um, if you need to have some fun with it, add some humor. Doing some daily exercises. Um, let's do uh, reasons why you should work out before writing. I think I've done that one on Crossing Colorado as well. I think I've actually done that one on Rider Sanctuary. But you can come up with all kinds of stuff with it. Okay, so right there, within what? Uh, I'd say about 10, 15 minutes. I came up with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. There's 32 blog posts. It took me 15 minutes. And we can keep going because, like, how to gamify with goals. Okay, well, we'll we can go through and find all kinds of stuff to go with that one. X ways to gamify your goals. All of these different ways that we just did, because that's what all this was, was a listicle of 16 ways. So depending on the number of ways we can find to gamify your goals, we can go into deeper details about each one of those. Um, how to use Asana. Um, we can then write a best practices for Asana or how to get the most out of Asana. What can you do with Asana Pro? Uh, X ways to set up a writing schedule. I mean, there's all kinds of ways we can keep going with this list. So it can really keep going forever as long as you kind of just brainstorm it. Decide on what you want, what you don't want. You can delete stuff as you go. There's really no right or wrong answer aside from what your audience wants to read. So there's all kinds of things you can do with it. Um, yeah. Let me uh, switch this back here. There we go. So anyway, that's uh, using Mindomo to mind map. I mean, like I said, it took me, what, 15 minutes? I came up with 32 blog posts, and I can keep going forever. Um, I don't know if I'll use these for the vocal media experiment, only because I've decided that on vocal media, I'm going to focus more on um, health and wellness, which is along the lines across Colorado. So I'm going to be comparing it versus my blog to see which one brings in the most money per view. So, once we have all those, what about adding it to Asana? Let me see if I can get Asana over there. And I will give you an example of Skadoosh. Here's my Asana. <laughs> so anyway, what I normally do is on the left here, I have all the blogs that I maintain and all the different things I want to do. And this is the free account of Asana. Uh, you can have up to 15 users and you can so far, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I got seven um, projects that you can add. And each one of these has a different thing. So if I wanted to go to blogging platforms, here's where I have my template for vocal media. I would take all the stuff from this here. Let's say we wanted to gamify with goals. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to duplicate the template. Go, whoops, vocal. Um, game by goals, create task. Okay, then we can go into this one here. And I, this here, I created this template for it. So the focus keyword is what I would use in Yoast. Secondary key phrases are anything I find while I'm researching, uh, like latent semantic indexing, LSI terms. And then any info is uh, stuff I wanted to add to this article. So what I'll do is later on, I would uh, research uh, gamifying with goals and probably browse for about, I don't know, five, 10 minutes, depending on how much information I can find with that. Plus a lot of this would be based on personal experience because I do gamify with goals. And I would set this to be due today and I would set me as the writer. So now it's assigned to me. So if I go back to my tasks, you can see if I look at it and there's my new task right here. So yeah, you can see that I've still got quite a bit to go through throughout the entire week. Oh, I'm doing that right now. I didn't get a chance to write on Wattpad because I was like stupid busy with everything else. I saw to check out Coloban. Anyway, that's how I'd add it. And then all of this, I, I wouldn't say all of it, but a good portion of everything on my list for December came off of mind mapping. 
So, especially with the uh, the green ones are for practically living green. And I got crossing Colorado, Colorado plays. I'm doing a lot of video content tomorrow. Um, Saturday, I've got a ton of stuff. This mostly this is just updates to Rice Sanctuary. I wanted to revamp some of the category structure so that I can fix all those. Then I'm also going to start working on cross, uh, Colorado. Crossing Colorado, God, there are too many websites. I gotta start revamping it. I'm still looking for a new theme for WordPress. Lots of lots of things going on. So, but yeah, that's how I would add it. And since both of these platforms are free to use, um, yeah, you don't lose anything by trying it out. Like with uh, Mindomo, you get two free. Um, I think that's still it should be two free mind maps that you can create. And then once you're done with something like this, you can export it to, well, I would just write them in Asana and then delete this one because I would no longer need it. Um, but you can keep them. It's completely up to you. I'll probably probably do something like this for the uh, vocal media experiment. Um, something more along lines with health and wellness. I'll start off with a listicle and just expand on that. And probably come up with all kinds of stuff. I might just do it for Crossing Colorado next month too. So. All kinds of potential with it. The hardest part though is going to be finding keywords to go with that list because not every idea we came up with is going to be effective and that's something you got to realize is that when you're running a blog you might come up with one or two really great articles but a lot of the ones you write are going to suck. Um, like right now uh, my review on buy me a coffee is the number one read piece of content on my website for the past year. Every month it gets like I would say five times more traffic than the article right below it. It makes up, that one article makes up 33% of the visitors to my website. I wish I can get them all to do that, but it doesn't always work that way. All comes down to what people are looking for and if you can provide search intent. So not everything on this list is going to be ideal. That's why we have to spend a little bit of time on each one to come up with the best terms possible and then structure something that somebody wants to read. That's the key to blogging is that it doesn't matter if you have the best keywords in the world or if you pay thousands of dollars a month for all the best tools you can find. If you can't write something nobody wants to read, no one's gonna read it. So <laughs> that's how, what it boils down to. Doesn't matter what kind of SEO practices you have, you can do everything right. You can be, if you had some kind of insight into how Google works, it doesn't matter because if you can't write if you don't write something that's not sought after on the search engine, it doesn't matter. That's where it gets difficult because uh, you still have to be a writer. But anyway, that's uh, that's how I would mind map it. Um, it's a great tool. It's free. I have the uh, the link to both Asana and Mindomo in the description down below in case you're curious. But yeah, it's don't lose anything. It's a great tool. Anyway. I guess I am done with that part. There's only like two people here. <laughs> so that was a lot shorter than that was going to be. Can't put it back in. So I guess uh, we're screwed. I'll have to keep the uh, chat window open now. <laughs> but if there's any, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, I'm open to anything. If you have any suggestions, ideas. The cool thing about my Domo is that you can also turn it into a checklist. So like every time you write up one of those blog posts, you just check it off your, your mind map and it's gone. So it's really, really handy. There's a lot of, a lot of different parts of it now. I'm probably going to explore, play around with later. You can also share the mind map on social media. You can insert new topics. You can um, start, start making a presentation. <laughs> cool. Uh, you can even add videos. So like if you wanted to really get into what Mindoma does, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. Mostly for if you're planning on starting a business, but I would probably not use very much of it. Only because I'm by myself most of the time and all the people that I have helping me, I interact with on Asana and I could just add the file there too. So it's all good. The reason why I like using Mindomo, and you can use pretty much anything to do the same thing. You can write it on a piece of paper and just write ideas on it. 
Um, you can use a spreadsheet, whatever works best for you. I like using Mindolo because it's a visual representation and I can give it priorities and I'm a very visual person. So something like that is very helpful. But you can do it any way that works best for you. Just start with a listicle and then each point that you want to write or each point that's going to be in that listicle, write an article about and then write an article on that. So like technically I said 32, this would actually be 48 ideas because each one of these points can have its own article all by itself linking back to the listicle back and forth. So yeah, there's all kinds of ways. I bet in an hour I could probably come up with a year's worth of content all from one piece of blog, well, one blog post. So yeah, it just throw out ideas and see what sticks. But anywho, that's where that's at. So, yeah, looks like we lost people. <laughs> oh, well. Wasn't very interesting, I know. But I figured it'd be something different than just sitting here watching me breathe. And I'm really excited about using this for 2021 because I am on a mission to write 1 million words next year. And doing stuff like this, plus all the different things I have planned for uh, the blogs and vocal media and um, everything else that I plan on writing. Like I've even planned on doing a couple of ebooks for supporters on Buy Me a Coffee. So um, all of that is just going to count towards 1 million, go, uh, 1 million words. And even if I have to catch up on the weekends, that's going to be the that's going to be the goal. My ultimate goal is just to surpass what I did this year. But the sub goal, I guess, would be the one million words. And based on what I've done the past uh, three weeks, it's in the bag. Pretty exciting. But I'm testing out all these different tools and trying to find the best ways I can go about doing all that. So, well. There you have it. So does anybody have any questions, comments, or concerns? Uh, I like it. My gnome is a good tool. I've tried a few other ones, but I think this one has a special place in my heart since I've been using it since 20, I think I started my account in 2016. Almost five years. Yeah. I just started using Asana three years ago, 2017. Yeah, almost four, three and a half. And I love the two of them together. Asana's been great, especially with uh, with me. With I often forget stuff, so when I have it all in Asana, I can see what I need to do next. It keeps me on track. I don't forget stuff. And if I come up with a new idea for something like, say. I'm in the middle of writing an article. I can just go to a task and throw it in there as a remember that, or as a reminder that I want to research uh, key phrases for this topic oh, and stick it in there. That way I remember where it's at. And it's been exceptionally helpful. In fact, it's helped me remember to make a lot of videos that people have suggested. So that's why I use it. And um, I like color coordinating all my stuff. Like uh, you saw earlier, where but gray is writer sanctuary, then Wattpad's orange vocal is kind of a pinkish color. Um, Crossing Colorado's blue, Colorado plays is purple. That way, I can just look at the day and say, "Oh, it is a writer sanctuary day," or "I've got to worry about fitness stuff or gaming stuff like that." So I really like it. It's awesome. The pro version of it rocks because my client has that and I get to play around with the pro version all day. <laughs> There's all kinds of fun stuff that I can do with it. Uh, so yeah, aside from that, is everybody ready for the new year? We got what, three weeks to go? What is it? It is a, the 14th, yep, yeah, we have two. Well, one, oops, one, two and a half weeks. All right, so we have two and a half weeks to go before the end of the year. And I, 
I'm excited. Um, everything's been coming into place ever since I came up with the idea of ending 2020 on a high note. Um, I haven't been able to do a lot of exercise stuff. Like today, I started working at 7, so I didn't have as much time to dump into exercising as I'd like, but I got a lot done. I'm happy in your new, or I'm happy in my, you're happy in my apartment. I'm happy in my new apartment. That's awesome. Um, it's been a long time since I've lived in an apartment. I've had a house since I should. <laughs> well, I, I left, oh, I used to live in a motel in a very crappy area of Commerce City. Moved into a trailer in Iliff. Then we went from the trailer to the house in Sterling. And then from Sterling, I guess the last time I lived in an apartment was for six months when I was in LA. And it wasn't too bad. Um, didn't really hear the neighbors at all. People really close to you. But yeah, the walls were pretty thick. So I, and we lived on the top floor. So I didn't have to worry about people overhead. But um, it, wasn't, it wasn't bad. I like East LA. Not East, West LA. I was in the Mar Vista area, closer to Venice Beach and Santa Monica. And I loved it there. But I love my house. Like, I love uh, my office. I love the area that we're in. Um, I have a nice big pond walking distance away. I feed every day. I've got like seven or eight different species of birds that come into my yard and I keep them fed. I have blue jays and pinion jays that come down every morning. I've got squirrels galore. I do miss not having the raccoons because back when we lived in Westminster, we had raccoons living in the garage. But I don't have that many raccoons out here. I do have a ton of hawks um, and robins and deer. Oh, there was some, a whole herd of deer when I was driving. I think I was heading out to get the girls from Sterling. There was a ton of deer stay on the side of the road. It's awesome. Really awesome. Yeah. My house, I have a brick house. My floors are so solid, I could probably park my car in the living room. That's so nice. I love birds. Yes, I love blue jays. And it was so cool that we actually have some. So I have uh, three I have three blue jays and a pinion jay that come down every day. And so far, they've left me one feather, which I picked up and I have it in a painting in the living room. And... Um, oh, the other day we had red-winged blackbirds come down, and it was really cool because it was right after it got cold. So with the red-winged blackbird, when they get cold, they floof their feathers like most birds. Well, when a red-winged blackbird floofs its feathers, on its back you see like a honeycomb shape of red through the black. So it's, it's kind of faint, but it's really, really cool looking. And we had, um, I think I counted like 24. Five blackbirds that were like robbing the food. <laughs> now I don't mind the bigger birds coming down and eating, but when they try landing on the bird feeder and they push all the little birds away, like I have chickadees. So when they when the blackbirds chase off the chickadees, they kind of upset. But I got a little upset. But it was still cool to see the the honeycomb shape and the color on the red wing blackbirds. It was pretty cool. Um. Think oh we have spotted woodpeckers that come down too. Almost forgot about that. We got house finches, house sparrows, lots of chickadees. Um what else? I think oh and then we have these grackles. During the summer we had a ton of grackles. In fact I uploaded a short video to Twitter of me tapping the window out front. And they come down. What happens is that I feed the squirrels. And the squirrels will eat the corn. Well, they only take like one bite of the corn. They eat the center out. And then they drop the corn on the ground. So then the bigger birds come down to eat the corn. Well, during the summer, I would have like 30 or 40 grackles come down. And a grackle is kind of about the same size as a blue jay. Uh, it's kind of skinny, black bird. And they come down. The whole yard was full of grackles. 
So I tapped on the window and it's like, boof. <laughs> they all just took off flying. So it was pretty funny to watch. Uh, let's see, we had grackles. And then uh, I haven't seen the grackles for a while. Um, I think the blue jays might have pushed them all the way. Uh, let's see, what else did came down? Anyway, the blue jays, grackles, the um, blackbirds. The doves will come down for the corn and the seeds. Um, God, I was going somewhere where, right before the grackles kind of sidetracked me. Hmm. Oh, and then there's this really cool little bird. I haven't looked up yet, but he has like this really weird chirp to it. Like a little squeak, almost. Kind of weird. But I haven't seen them before until like a month ago. They start showing up. So um, they were out there. They were out back this morning when I was walking the dog. But kind of cool little bird. But yeah, I've got birds galore. In fact, I uploaded a, I Instagrammed my picture of a blue jay eating out of the squirrels' dish. <laughs> it's awesome. Lately, I mixed up a, a nut and fruit mix with the squirrel food. And so when I pour in the squirrel food, which is mostly corn, um, sunflower seeds, and peanuts, but I mixed in like walnuts and fruits and um, unshelled sunflowers and stuff like that that little birds would like to. So I poured that in there. And the squirrels think the berries are pretty awesome. So does everything else. So like when I look out there, it's like the bigger birds chase the squirrels away and eat the squirrel food. <laughs> they don't eat the peanuts, but yeah. Blue jays will rob the squirrels. <laughs> and all the sparrows will pick off all the sunflowers. The sunflower seeds. Oh, aside from that, um, I'm still running the, um, survey i am tired can you tell so running the survey on rice of what i'm doing with monday videos starting next year and it looks like uh people are on the fence of me doing this every monday so i don't know if it'll be a theme every monday like today today was a how to use asana and a mind domo for um getting blog ideas um Maybe we can probably do a few webinars in the future. WordPress stuff, maybe some more writing stuff. Um, I am still working on trying to get my book published. So I would love to do uh, self-publishing stuff. So that might be in the future. Um, but yeah, if, uh, if you have a moment and you haven't done the uh, survey, it's there. I still haven't visited the website yet. I should do that. See, yeah. Uh, that's why I bring it up during the live stream. <laughs> and it wouldn't be so bad. You know, if I was uh, on the partner program for YouTube, I could just do my surveys here, but I don't have the subscriber count nor the watch time. So I'm hitting, I'm at 891 subscribers right now. So I'm almost to a thousand, but I'm at 2.2 thousand hours watch time. So I'm nowhere near, I'm just over halfway there to being a partnership program according to hours so i don't think i will be in the ypp anytime next year so unfortunately that means i don't have the community tab i don't have i can't run surveys on youtube so that's why i have to do it on writersanctuary.com and i was thinking about trying to do some on twitter and i'm not really sure how they work on Facebook. So I might play around with that. So, I don't know. Will Shepard, how much of your personality showed when you first began writing versus now? None. <laughs> One of the biggest issues I had with the text broker was they would come back at me all the time saying how clinical my writing was. In other words, I would write like an IKEA manual on Valium. So it took a lot to get past that because I've always been way too professional, especially like in the YouTube videos. I try to be more personable in the videos, but with Rider Sanctuary, it's more professional. I try too hard to 
curtail a lot of who I am. Um, with Colorado Plays, I don't know. That's an adult channel. It shows. <laughs> but when I first started writing, it was I was trying to show off that I had a thesaurus, that I had this big, long, I was brilliant and could use all these fancy words. And I caught a lot of flag. So it took me, well, I'm, I'm still kind of, uh, still kind of, I wouldn't say stale, but I'm still kind of on the more professional side when I write. Um, unless it's on michaelbrockbank.com, then I kind of let the, the uh, obscenities fly a bit <laughs> because that's my blog. I'll do what I want. I remember you saying that. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's true. Um, it, it took a while. It took a long time for me to break out of that. Uh, a big part of what helped was um, that was about the same time that Yoast SEO came out. And I've always been, I've been using WordPress since 2010. And I started writing in 2012. And I started using WordPress to use as my word processor because I had a spell checker. I had all these different tools that helped me spruce up the uh, content. And then I would just copy and paste from WordPress to Text Broker for my clients. And after I got Yoast, I went from having maybe five or six revisions a week to one, maybe two. And the what Yoast does is that it scans for readability. And if you keep your flesh reading e-score up to a certain level, then it's much easier to read. And so doing stuff like that helped me a lot to avoid being too clinical. And they stopped complaining about it. You can be personal or professional at the same time. You can, unless your personality is a an acquired taste. Remember when I was saying that last last time? <laughs> I can be pretty. Uh, I don't know if there's a good word for it. <laughs> I have a mouth like a drunken sailor. Uh, most of the time, I try to I try to curtail it for writer sanctuary, but the uh, crossing or the Colorado plays videos or Twitch stream uh, when I'm with when I'm playing with my friends or if my sons are involved we're dirty we're very very dirty <laughs> which is why it's set to being an adult only channel and I do take a lot of that out for our sanctuary and I like I was the video today I was looking through I'm like God I need to be more I don't know what it is um. I'm more fun than that. <laughs> Makes me look like some kind of weird. I don't know. I'm still working on it. I've been making videos for two years. I still haven't really found my groove. Oh, at least it's getting a little bit easier to make the videos. Personable I'm, just means friendly. Doesn't have to mean adult only content. <laughs> well, no, you're, that's, that's true. Um, I guess I am personable in every aspect. It just depends on if you like my personality or not. And I think a lot of people that follow me on Rice Sanctuary probably wouldn't follow me on um, Colorado Plays because that is a much different setting. And that's fine. Um, everybody has a different kind of audience. It's weird because I have to have like three different personalities for all the different stuff I do. And then I have my clients that I have to do. And with that one, that's way different than what I do now. And so um they're still debating on putting me on camera for their videos because essentially I'm the only one that'll sit in front of a camera and talk. Acquire taste. I better stick to critical. <laughs> well um you know, it, you can, it can it takes a little bit of work, but as long as you don't add too much of your personality. Like uh well I try to curtail a lot of the cussing on Rider Sanctuary. Like there's been a few times where I dropped the F bomb or I think I said shit earlier today. But um so I try to curtail a lot of that uh for this channel. But I still kinda add a little bit of my personality to it. I don't know, it's really hard to explain. I think I'm funny, but it's a party of one sometimes. Exactly. <laughs> right? <laughs> I think you do a great job. Well thank you, Diana. I try my best to do as best I can. Um, sometimes, like it depends on the day. Like if I'm on a, if I get wired, like last week, I'm impressed that I had people watching last week because that, or not last week, 
uh, the last video. The last live stream, I was hyper as hell. And I was impressed that I was able to um, reel it back some. Because <laughs> I was bouncing off the walls before and after that video. So, when it comes to Rise Sanctuary, I am more professional because that's what people expect. So, um, but when I'm writing content, it depends on the client. I can add a bit of personality to it. I have more fun with it. One client didn't like it because I added too much personality. I mean, I wasn't like grotesque or anything, but um, I guess I was just not what their business related to, I guess. I don't know. So it did take me a long time to get personality in. Um, but yeah, looking back, like I've been doing a lot of revamps on Writer Sanctuary back from 2012, and this was when I first started writing um, for Text Broker. And <laughs> I was look, going back looking over, I'm like, holy crap, there's a big difference in nine years. <laughs> so, yeah, it's cringeworthy. I think I wrote a blog post about that too, <laughs> about it being cringeworthy. But it's worth it because, yeah, when you read through it, it was it was bad. It was... Oof. I wonder why I caught so much crap. But if you think about it, that's because I went to this college for graphic design. I'm not a writer. I never, you know, I never took any college classes for writing. My professors loved my essays, but that's it. And there's a big difference between Oxford style and AP style. So when I first started writing for textbook, I had no idea what I was doing. So for me to come as far as I did is pretty impressive. How often do you write on TV these days? Actually, lately, I haven't even opened my account. I keep getting uh, invites to Teams and stuff, but I haven't been able to get into it because I have been insanely busy the last uh, the last two months. It's been like nonstop for everything else. Um, and not just for my own blogs, but for my client as well. Um, I've done a lot of stuff for Green Geeks. We had to upload, I've uploaded a lot of uh, tutorials for tutorials a lot of webinars for green geeks i did all that so it's just been so busy that i haven't had a chance to get on text broker and i really should um i will be getting on to the other platforms next year but um yeah hey new subscriber david ogle awesome if you're watching thank you um yeah, why am I getting notifications? God, I hate my phone. And that's not, uh, whatever. <laughs> Anywho, um, I really want to do some more first looks. Um, I, look, I kind of like doing them, even though I did get a comment recently. Someone complained about my first look at Vocal, saying how it was not a proper review, even though a first impression isn't a review. But whatever. I thought the title would have gave it away, but I guess not. I would like to do some more first looks starting next year. Like um, I have iWriter on the plate. Um, I think I want to get back into constant content. Uh, that's a really good idea. Constant content. So, what will you do when you reach 1,000 subscribers? Make another video. <laughs> I know a lot of blog, a lot of YouTubers call 1,000 subscribers like a milestone. And I guess it is, but for me, you know, um, I created the channel as a way to uh, augment the blog. It became its own animal, and I have to kind of go back and forth between the two because each one has its own audience. But um, I don't know. I would like to, I did something fun for 500 subscribers. I gave away a $25 gift card to Barnes & Noble. Maybe we'll do a 100 I would, I don't know, I can't afford a thousand dollar gift card, but maybe a hundred dollar gift card to Barnes and Noble. That'd be kind of fun. Or maybe I can come up with uh, something cool that centers around 1000. Um, I don't know if anybody has any ideas of what we can do for a thousand subscribers, um, comment or, um, contact me through writersanctuary.com's website on the contact form. Those get sent directly to me. And I take every um, suggestion seriously. So if you guys have any suggestions, let me know. But I would love to do something fun. And uh, 
I was like, last time I had the hardest time trying to come up with something cool for Rider Sanctuary at a thousand or at five hundred. And the only thing I could think of, and it was Sam's idea, was to give away a twenty-five dollar gift card to Barnes Noble because it's related to writing. I would like to do something similar, but I think we probably have a little bit more fun with it, or maybe do more. Um, too bad I don't have any sponsors. They might help. <laughs> That's all right. It's all good. I'm not important enough to monetize. Um. God, there's got to be something cool. I want to be thinking about it because we're at 891, 892 now. And so it's coming up quick. And based on how fast I gain subscribers, it'll be about March. So Barnes & Noble gift cards. See, I like I like the Barnes & Noble gift card idea. I don't know if the last person who got it won because what, what I did was at 500 subscribers, I did kind of like a raffle thing where you went to the website and you filled out the contact form all I needed was your email address, whether you wanted to be anonymous or not, and then what were your favorite types of videos on the channel. And so the winner opted to be anonymous. So like, all right, well, I'll respect that. So I announced there was a winner. It was an anonymous winner. And I sent her an email, but she never replied. She didn't say thank you or anything. So I have no idea if the gift card was even used, <laughs> but check your spam folder. It might be there. <laughs> I can't remember her name. I have it written down somewhere. It's on a spreadsheet. But yeah, it was a kind of a bummer. I was hoping that somebody would have wanted to be announced. Yeah. There was only like a... God, how many... I, I only had a handful of entrants. And I think if I remember right, I even streamed it or recorded it. Because I got an app that randomly picked a number. So it was a random, completely random person that won. So we might do something again like that. I might set it up on the website. It came across a lot of really cool apps for doing giveaways and raffles and stuff. So at 1,000 subscribers, we'll probably do something like that. Maybe I will add a few things. Maybe it won't just be one thing. Like last time it was a $25 gift card. But what if I went ahead and did like a $50 gift card or and... Um, maybe a free subscription to something or a free membership to the, a free subscription to the buy me a coffee. Cause I'm going to be doing a lot of buy me a coffee stuff for supporters. So maybe I can give you a free supporter thing. So you said you're really busy. Hey, does it, does it have anything to do with the pandemic? I'm so ready for the new year reset, by the way. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> it had, it has nothing to do with the pandemic. That's just actually when every I, I feel bad because when everybody started losing their jobs, I actually picked up work because um I'm good at what I do and I've increased oh wow. I've increased our visitor traffic to Green Geeks by a lot. So I've spent a lot of time researching content and setting up my team. I've had to manage the team, I've did the YouTube videos. Not just for my channel, but for theirs. Um, and then towards the end of this year, I decided, you know what? I'm tired of just having the blog sit idle. So we're dumping in effort to make uh, the end of 2020 awesome. So far, it has been. But as for it affecting the pandemic, uh, the pandemic affecting anything, I would have to say not. Um, mostly because the industries that I'm in have no bearing on stuff like that. like. Uh, um, web hosting. I'm sure we probably got a little bit of a boost in web hosting since everybody was staying home. Well, should have been staying home. But without the money to put into web hosting, um, I'm not sure if anybody actually bought anything. I don't have access to those numbers, so I'd have no idea. But um, the blogs, all the stuff that I do, really has, the pandemic has really had no impact on them. So, I actually got busier mostly because of me. And yes, I am ready for a new reset. But like I brought up in the last live stream, that if we don't address the stuff that made 2020 such a shit year, it's just going to fall us into 2021. So we might as well spend the next couple of weeks making sure that the next year isn't going to bring the same amount of stuff from before. Um, like for me, for example, I want my novel finished i want to be able to publish it 
because self-publishing will give me a blog post and a video. <laughs> give me a couple of blog posts. Can I do a how-to upload to Amazon, stuff like that? Oh, yeah. Big plans. I have to finish the damn thing first. So that's one of the things I wanted to end the year was just get going. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was sitting there chatting with Chris Tessitoff, and I'm like, you know what? Let's just, let's do it. Let's end 2020 way better than we started. So. Just good old-fashioned hard work wins again. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, exactly. Um, I've been putting in a ton of effort, and it shows. I'm tired. Today was uh, an exceptionally long day. I had I did three really good blog posts that I wrote for Writer Sanctuary. They'll be published Wednesday, th Wednesday, Friday, and next Monday. Um, I got the plans out for all the videos and stuff I'm doing this week. Um. I am excited for some of the Rider Sanctuary videos I have coming up. Um, like Wednesday, I'm just going to do a why I use YouTube as an extension of the blog. I'm going to compare and show why, um, as a blogger, why would I have a YouTube channel? And I'm going to show that uh, I, out of all the social media channels I use, I get more visitors to the blog from YouTube than any of the other ones combined. So it's definitely worth having a YouTube channel if you're a blogger. Um, if anything, for marketing, I'm not even worried about monetizing. Like if YouTube ever says, okay, here's some AdSense, I would like, whatever. Because AdSense really doesn't pay a lot. See what I mean about my personality? <laughs> AdSense really doesn't pay a lot. And I know the realism of it from a blogger's perspective. I don't know if it's the same um, with videos. But when it comes to blogging, um, you don't earn dick. You would have to have, like for me, on average, I would have to have about 350,000 visitors a month just to make $1,000. So AdSense is good and all for bringing in a trickle, but you don't want to rely on it. And so I don't. I use YouTube as a way to accentuate my blog as a marketing tool. For marketing, it's definitely worth it. And then I've met some amazing people like Diana and you, Will, and Shyman and everybody else who watches the videos. I've met some amazing people. And so it's definitely worthwhile if you're a blogger to make a YouTube channel. Um, I've got, let's see, tomorrow I'm writing, oh, I'm writing about how it took, why it took me six years to lose 80 pounds. And it has a lot to do with uh, mental illness, um, depression, and uh, facing down a midlife crisis. So that's going to be fun to write. Um, then we got, oh, I have a, a blogging one for Crossing Colorado for superhero exercises you can do right now. Because um, uh, you can do the Spider-Man, there's a Superman, there's all kinds of cool superhero named exercises that you can use. And a lot of them are actually fairly decent. Like I like doing the Spider-Man plank. So. But anyway, my point is, <laughs> I'm off on a tangent, is that I'm pretty excited about all the different content I've got coming out. And so far, I've been sticking with it. So I'm going to end 2020 on a good note. And then we're going to hit 2020, uh, 2021 running. Um, 2021 starts off with, uh, probably going to set this one, or write, do this one first and then upload it later. I might change it. I was going to do a first look at writer's work, but I'm still on the fence on doing that one. I might do this one here. It's a review on Jubal. Jubal is a job aggregator for virtually anything. And um, I hooked up with them recently and they added Writer Sanctuary to their uh, list of advertisers. And I have their banner on my blog and uh, it's a cool system. Um, it took me what like five minutes and i found like a ton of writing jobs um here in the denver area so it's a, a decent platform but like every aggregator they also fall victim to obsolete data sometimes a job is no longer available so the business complains and then they get bad reviews on sites like uh, Glassdoor, and most of it is from companies and businesses that no longer have a position open but you got to understand how an aggregator works so and since I do, I don't find events in it. Oh, then what else? Oh, we got so much stuff coming up. 
but I'm excited. It's not even, you know, like sometimes I sound like I'm exhausted because I am, but <laughs> sometimes I sound like I'm frustrated, but I'm really not. It's just, I'm, there's a lot coming up, but I'm really excited for it. Um, I don't know if I'll have my Wattpad, if uh, 7 will be done by the end of the year. But it is scheduled to start working on it for at least an hour. So I'm thinking about uh, moving that to mornings. And working on 7 before anything else for at least an hour. That way I'll know 7 will get done. But that's one thing I love about Asana is that I can look at the list and say, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. I've got, I gotta check out two things tonight before I go to bed. Um, one of them is probably something I want to be adding to my list of productivity apps. There's a couple of new ones that people have brought up to me. Um, yeah. Aside from that, lots of big plans for 2021. I'm excited. Really, really. I just hope I can lose the rest of my weight. I'd be more excited if I weighed 200 pounds by the end of the year. Not going to happen. That's 20 pounds in two weeks. Oh, that's going to be pushing it. I've lost two pounds this week so far, though. So, I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to see. Aside from that, yeah. God, I just went on, on for like 40 minutes. My God. So, anywho, um, it is getting, well, it's 8.10. I am tired, and I... I'm about uh, about ready to wrap it up. Um, thank you for everybody for stopping by. Nice seeing you again, Will. You ought to stop by more often every other Monday, unless unless people vote that I do this every Monday, because I will adhere to what everybody votes on on uh, the surveys at RidersSanctuary.com. And if you're there for about thirty seconds, it'll pop up and they'll ask you if you want to participate. It's not even don't even have to sign up with an email or anything. You just select your answers, hit submit. And so far, it looks like I'll be maybe doing live shows every Monday. So I will adhere to what everybody wants. You managed to say mental health, depression, and midlife crisis. And make it funny. <laughs> Good on you for pulling it off. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm actually fairly, good, fairly good at doing stuff like that. Um, it doesn't show as much in my blogs as it does in live video. But, no, I can, uh, sometimes I can get away with it. So, thank you. You are welcome. Thank you for stopping by. Um, I haven't seen you around in a long time. Diana is here almost every other weekend. Or every other week, not weekend, because it's Monday. But, yeah, uh, whoever, however the survey goes, starting January, I guess that'd be the 4th, huh? Uh, yep. So, if it goes that way, then we'll be doing live feeds every Monday. And uh, I think I also have, have, there's two questions on it. There's, should I do this every other Monday, every Monday, or it doesn't matter. And then the other question is, what kind of video should we do on it? So, um, leave, your, leave your answers and uh, let's see how everything goes. But I think, I think I'm going to call it though. Um, but if you guys ever have any questions, comments, and concerns, you can always hit me up on social media, Twitter, and Facebook, or use the contact form at RidersHTRA.com website. That's one of the only lines of my videos that I have memorized where I never mess up. Like, oh, I should have done a, a, a bloopers reel for today's, because the beginning of it was just amazing. It was an epic failure, <laughs> but I was laughing through it. So... I was going to put it, and I don't know why I didn't. I think I just forgot. Oh, well. Um, but anyway, if you reach me on... Uh, I'm more active on Twitter, only because I have it open all the time on my screen. Because I have two monitors. And I'm not normally as active on Facebook, but I will respond to any chats anybody sends. Um, I've actually talked to Diana a couple of times. So if anybody sends me a message, I'll try to respond as quickly as possible. Uh, Twitter is definitely, definitely the go-to for me though. I do like the Facebook page. Um, 
my only my only regret about having the pace the Facebook page is that every once in a while I'll have somebody get on and profess their undying love to me. <laughs> Long story. But uh yeah. I haven't heard from her in a while. Ever since I said I didn't really say I wasn't interested. I was just kinda I wasn't really leading her on. I think she was trying to scam me out of money because it was like 20 minutes in a conversation. Oh, by the way, I'm madly in love with you. Like, you don't even know me. <sighs> scammers. Sometimes I'll mess with scammers and lead them on for weeks at a time. Like that one, Michelle, on, she met me on Fitbit. And then I decided to chat with her on Google Hangouts. And I kind of messed with her for about a month. It was two months. Till she finally asked me to give her some iTunes cards, and I said no. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm on a budget, and I haven't heard from her since. So I definitely want you to do streams every Monday. <laughs> Rarely, you're not the only one. I saw a few votes on it already. And I'm like, Diana's been to the page, but if you haven't voted, that means somebody else wants me to do it every Monday. So, well, it could be worse. Yeah, it could be. It could be some guys professing their undying love. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if I can say that nowadays, but sorry. My gate don't swing that way. Not that there's anything wrong with being gay, but as a guy, I don't know. I love women. <laughs> Too much info. <laughs> All right. Anyway, me too. <laughs> oh, oh, this is what happens when I'm half asleep trying to do a live show. This is what you're going to be dealing with every Monday. <laughs> it depends on the Monday. It might be worse. Maybe one of these times we ought to do a drunken Monday. Probably get flagged by YouTube though. <laughs> you can't drink. No swearing. That would have to be a cross a Colorado plays video. Abort abort. <laughs> right. <laughs> pull up, pull up. We're going down in a flaming heap. <laughs> go to sleep <laughs> right all righty well thank you guys for watching um the last stream we'll do i think i'm going to do something special on the 28th it'll be the last stream of 2020 and our official goodbye to a shit year so cue jerry seinfeld voice not that there's anything wrong with that oh i was thinking oh you know what i was just thinking that as i was saying it too not that there's anything wrong with that my father's gay. <laughs> that was a great episode. <laughs> anyway, um, on the 28th, we'll be doing a uh, something special. Not sure what. Maybe we'll do Christmas carols. I don't know. But it's the last last stream of the year, and we're going to make it epic somehow. Um, I'll see if I can gather some people. Maybe we'll do a... Maybe we'll get some people here, and we'll have a party live stream. I don't know. And then depending on how everything goes, we'll do it every Monday on starting on the 4th. So, cool. All righty. Well, let me get my chat window again. There we go. Okay, well, yeah, not that there's anything wrong with that. All righty. Thank you guys for watching, sticking around, and listening to my oddities while I'm half asleep. I'm not really half asleep. It's more of just exhausted. I, my brain has been on since seven. I've been staring at a white screen all day long. I'm impressed I don't have a migraine. I need new glasses. My lens came out of my glasses today in the middle of the store, so I had to put it back in. <sighs> it's been a day. Anyway, I am going to call it. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you on the 28th. Don't forget, live stream on the 28th. Last one of the year. Everybody got to be there. Have a good one. Problem is, is that now I don't know how to end this because if I stop streaming, it might cut me off in the middle of a sentence. So I'm going to try hitting stop streaming on OBS and see what happens. One of these days, I'm going to figure it out.